It's showtime. Hello guys, welcome back to the SCPL. My name is Kix, joining me is Rapid, and we're about to head into Game 3 of uh, today's match, or well, first match. Yep. Oh, sorry, you caught me eating my chewy gummy vitamins. Uh, Whoops. But yeah, I, the uh, well maybe Castle should have eaten a few of those. So. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, it's game number three, probably the best game of the night, I want to say. Uh, Soul is poised to take the 3-0 the victory. And, I mean, we play the fourth game anyway, but I'm actually really excited for this one. This is where, if I can use my epic movie voice, Brood War Life could turn it all around. <laughs> I what could happen? I do love that voice. You don't do it very often, but when you do it, it's, it's a good effect. Good dramatic effect, I will say. One of these days, I'm hoping that at the apex of my career, I'll get to record a voiceover for an STPL intro video. Mm, wow. Perhaps. I you don't never know. know. One day. You don't know what's coming in the future, but obviously there's. A boy can dream, Kick. <laughs> yeah, it's been the pinnacle. You've been waiting for this your entire life <laughs> to voice over a Brood War tournament intro. But you know what? Hey, After I voiced it the over guy... when I was there with Kadenzi. Yeah, yeah, I know. That was actually really good. But you know the uh, GSL guy who they used to have, who used to be like. Oh, yeah, I actually hung out with Matt earlier today. Yeah, you could do his job. Just like push him off a bridge or something. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I'm gonna send him a clip of that. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> I definitely could not do his job. He's insanely talented. Google Baby Shark video, and uh, it's his voice, uh, too. It's the same guy that does the GS1 ASL. It's actually sick. Uh, but no, that guy's amazingly talented, and uh, I could never, uh, never hope steal to his job. That level. Okay, but well. I'm hoping that I can, I can still uh, wine and dine you to get that opportunity. Anyway, let's actually get into the StarCraft yeah. uh, so that we can talk about the players coming up. Yeah, so the players we've got coming up here are going to be for Soul Gaming. It's Buell, uh, the school championship winner. Uh, he is currently 1-0 in this round of the SCPL. It is his debut round as well, so not really seen too many games of his, but the one we did see was really, really cool to see. And it gives me some builds to steal as well, because he's not quite flash level. So he's a little bit easier to copy. Uh, but his opponent going to be BWL's Kingdom. Uh, now Kingdom is actually the captain of BWL. He did used to be a member of Naz. Uh, due to a little bit of an internal conflict in the team between Kingdom and someone else. He did move out, created his own team of other North American players. And here they are. In the SCPL round three, Kingdom has won his first game, did lose his second one, uh, but he is currently one for one against Terran, and he should be a fairly good opponent here for Buell as they head into Katrina Essie. Okay, now Katrina Essie, uh, relatively stat well, it's kind of standard, kind of not, uh, sort of weird base layout, main. Uh, natural behind the main, 12, 6, 3, and 9 o'clock spawns. Uh, third base is kind of in the middle unless you take one of the other mains. Uh, very easy to take another main on this map though. They're going to be very important for Protoss to try and secure two mains later in the game to get a lot of gateways, a lot of production ramping up. But without further ado, let's head into game at number 3. And spawning a survey in the 9 o'clock position, we do have the Red Terran fighting for Soul. It's going to be Buell. Uh, he is facing off against the brown Protoss player for Brood War Life. It's Kingdom. Okay, so it's been 10 years since I played this map, Smiley Face. Which is actually an angry face con uh, colon gun colon at kicks for putting this map back in the map pool. <laughs> Katrina is a good map, man. It's it, just watch it'll be in ladder next season. That, that'll be it. <laughs> I actually I actually would not uh, put that past Blizzard to just like watch foreign brood war tournaments uh, or you know uh, bombastic star league or something like that and just be like, so the kids out there are playing these maps these days. And then, like, you know, Grant, like, calls up the guy that does the maps, and he's like, all right, I saw 
this game from STPL. We need Katrina in the map pool. I actually hope that happens with Shin Peaks of Baked Dew. That map is so sick, but that, I'm super biased about that. And Katrina, it's not the weirdest map, and I think it does do a... It has a lot of the, the common similarities of rotationally symmetric maps, and that means that it even if you spawn in close positions, there's a lot of variability depending on which close position you spawn in. Uh, for example, if you spawn south and your opponent is to your right uh, on the uh, eastern side of the, the map, then actually their main is super close to, uh, or yeah, their main is super close to uh, you. And especially when it comes to proxying, that means that they can just run out because the ramp is right at the, the bottom of the, the main. You can yep. just actually just run out and build proxy buildings insanely fast. He can. Now, there's also a lot of room out the front to build gateways to build factories and things like that as well. Obviously, the mains are a little bit narrow drops. Very, very good on this map, so wouldn't be surprised if we saw some shuttles early on from Kingdom. Uh, Kingdom did show his PBT is pretty strong before, and now Buell, of course, uh, one of the ASL qualifications. Well, Qualifiers, he did uh, make it through into the round of 24. Unfortunately, didn't have much luck in his games, but uh, he did join Seoul after a couple of have at use he played in, much like a lot of their roster. Uh, they're kind of Fujikura as the admin is kind of using that as a chance to poach members for his clan. Uh, but obviously, <laughs> Buell is going to scout out here behind a barracks. He is going to go into gas, so he's not going to go into a one racks expand, despite it being quite easy on this map. Just because he wants to play a little bit safer, possibly go into a little bit of a fake double or something like that. It'll be kind of interesting to see exactly how he takes this. Now, he is going to wall off, so I imagine he's possibly just going to siege or expand here and then take a very, very quick expansion. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm kind of waiting to see what the inevitable purpose of this SCV is up here. Um, I would expect early expands here. I would say kind of the hardest part for a Terran player is sort of, okay, when is it okay for me to expand? Where do I build my command center? Uh, but it's not going to actually be an early expand for, uh, for uh, sorry, Biol. He's going to be go for uh, one base, at least for now, getting his factory up. And I'm guessing it's going to be a factory expand, but he could just 1-1-1 one, one, one it. Yeah, now it looks like he has pulled one guy off gas for now. Uh, so yeah. he has got two guys on gas, so... Uh, looks like he is going to be going for an expand behind this. Now, we do have two gate power goon coming in from Kingdom. Going into range, going to be getting a lot of dragoons very, very quickly. And now there's no additional tech just yet for him. There's no third pylon or anything. Uh, that'll be coming down in the next sort of 40 seconds or so. Uh, Buell going to move up and try and scout for a natural expansion as well, just to make sure he's not been 12 next or anything crazy like that. But uh, even if you do 12 next on this map, unlike... Um, I can't remember what map Mini decided to do it on. Uh, oh, what was it? Was it Circuit Breaker? I can't remember. Either way, 12 next, very, very dodgy on certain maps. But I mean, the Nexus is completely defended by your main base, so you can't even put any pressure on that. Um, it looks like we are going to have Buell expanding first. Okay, so he is actually going to go Expo uh, after the factory. And so that makes everything a lot more easy to understand. Um, but for our Protoss player, like you said, powering on goons, and uh, so this is something that looks weirder on this map specifically than it does on most maps because, you know, the ramp just goes right into your main. Yeah, now one thing we do have the option of seeing is possibly taking down this power generator. It is just a single power generator, no stack or anything like that. So. I mean, Buell can repair this wall for days. Now, of course, we are going to see a tank popping out fairly shortly. No siege mode on the way just yet. That's only just now started up, but uh, we see good micro here from Buell to keep his SCV alive. And I mean, it almost feels like Kingdom needs to just start attacking that power generator, but I guess maybe he's stacking up some more Dragoons, see if he can get any damage on whatsoever uh, without pushing too far forward. Now range about to finish up, and that's going to be the real game changer, as these SCVs are actually going to be under con uh, under threat from these Dragoons. Uh, yeah, and the tank was actually a few more seconds, a few seconds later than I expected it to be. Uh, so range isn't going to be done for a, a little bit here. I mean, this is three Dragoons, right? The fourth one coming up right now. And as soon as you have six, if you can, like, maybe micro forward and just uh, you know, hit that tank a few times, that's what he's, exactly what he's going to do. If you had six there, the chances of that tank going down were much, much higher. 
Uh, so obviously that would have been super fast and unreasonable. But hey, if he had like proxied or something, Siege Mode is going to finish here in just a couple of seconds. Oh, and the tank! Like, oh my god! No way, he's not actually repairing it. One more shot! Oh my god, that tank has one hit left on it. Oh, that would have been so, so close, but SCVs are going down in the main. Uh, we do see no additional tech, though, from Kingdom. He's been spending all of his APM trying to micro these goons, trying to get as much damage as humanly possible, and I feel like that window opportunity is closing. We've actually got a pylon coming up at the wall for some reason. I mean, the supply depot has gone down, but Bjol, with his, uh, with his siege tanks now, in an incredible position. So one wow. of the reasons that pylon's there, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the pylon, when you tank a tank hit, you can run in, shoot, and then back off, I think, with some of your Dragoons. Also, it's only one tank, and so if this is such a key part of your tanks. strategy... two tanks. Oh yeah, okay, okay, so sorry, I didn't see the second tank. But if it's only one tank, then you can actually like run up with all four Goons, spread them out enough so you only tank one tank shot, and then micro that back and have it hit in between. It's a... Uh, I guess a little bit more intensive, but I mean, this is it, right? Like you said, he doesn't have anything else. This is his only tech in the world. He's expanding, or at least trying to expand, but this is just a lot of goons that can't really do a whole lot. Yeah, now the other thing is, one of the gateways actually nearly got killed by a single SCV. It got all the shields down on its own and took down 30, no, 21 health even, so... That was, no, 31 health, sorry, I, I really can't count, but that's a, that's a hero SCV that did Managed to force one of the Dragoons to come back eventually. Now, the tank's in a very, very strong position here. Gonna stop any additional Dragoons trying to push in from the low ground to do any damage. But we're gonna have to see something by Kingdom soon. Because he's not going for a Nexus behind this. He's just adding more Goons. Yeah, I was gonna say, the only unit that is worse against Terran than a Dragoon is maybe, like, a Corsair or something. Like, <laughs> I mean, there's just... It, there's not a whole lot dragoons do it's like they lose to basically anything um and and also they kind of need support from zealots at some point and there are just zero zealots in this game so uh this is not the standard way to play pvt by any means yeah now one benefit that he does have he is only up against one factory worth of production so maybe he can make something happen but i mean still no second nexus coming in from kingdom Adding on another pylon as well, so he's just continuing to add Dragoons right now. And I really do wonder what his plan is going to be. I was expecting to see maybe like a proxy coming up somewhere or something like that at this point. But he really is just building nothing but Dragoons right now. Now, imagine if he'd had like a Robo at the bottom main or something like that and he started shuttling Dragoons into the back of Bjol's base. Like, what is Bjol going to do against that? But I mean, against just pure Dragoon on the ground, there's... I mean, he's not really in any danger whatsoever. He's got way too many tanks for that to cause any problems. And you can see Buell is actually kind of second-guessing what Kingdom's doing. He's keeping his back three tanks unseaged to give him that option of sort of moving around. And he's even going to add supply depots to try and help defend against those drops. They're just... they're not coming, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, what, it, what the only thing that is coming is going to be Dragoons. And then more Dragoons, and then more Dragoons, and then, yeah, you get the idea. So, at this point, Bjol, like, in, in his Korean pro gamer head, he's got to be kind of scratching his, the side of his head, and he's like, wait a second, what, what's going on here? And it is a big, scary, dark world out there. I mean, he's got a scan, but when he scans, and he's, he's not going to know how to interpret what he sees, because it's just so wacky. Yeah, now he did scan the natural, saw there was no natural there, of course he can't be sure there isn't a hidden base. Uh, I know if I was playing I'd be kind of thinking like, okay, so where's the guy's hidden base now, like what have I missed? I mean, Kingdom is actually going to expand to his third base first. I mean, this is eight minutes into the game and he's still on one base, still with only two Dragoon, or sorry, two gateways, and no tech, so where is Kingdom going to take this? So, Wow, Buell is actually going to scan this, sees the Nexus coming up at the third base, but how is he going to interpret this even? I mean, it's just so weird. Yeah, exactly. You're just not going to know. And this is what, I, you know, Idra used to complain about this too. He would lose to, to like, double quotes, bad players. Because in... This is true for any game. It's like you kind of learn a way to play the game, right? And especially for Brood War, there's a double quotes meta. And then every once in a while, you play against this guy, and it's just like it's just like he's playing like 
I don't know, Hot Wheels or something. It's just so, <laughs> so di- it's like this is not what Brood War looks like. It's just uh, you lose, and you're just like, well, I okay, but yeah, this is gonna look super weird. Um, because you know, we we haven't stopped Dragoon production, by the way, kicks. We, we're still just pumping two two Dragoons at a time this whole this whole time. Yeah, now there is finally oh, no, a he, Robo coming down. Kicks, kicks. He blocked his expansion. Oh. Kingdom was trying to expand to the north, uh, north uh, east side, but he built the pylon too close, and he blocked his expand there. So he has to kill that pylon, and that's why he expanded forward to his third base. Now, it is natural. I saw that pylon earlier, and I kind of highlighted where the nexus would go, and it felt a little bit weird to me. But yeah. I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't kind of put two and two together. Like, whoa, he can't actually build a nexus there. Now he has got a pylon <laughs> in the middle of the map as well that isn't really doing too much at the moment. Yeah, but... that pylon that he killed, by the way, supply blocked him oh. uh, when he killed it to make room for the nexus. So unless he's going to expand there now, uh, which obviously is super late. Uh, Hmm, I don't know, man. I mean, we're still... He's got Dragoons queued up on some of his gateways, because he's only got two gateways. Like, that, that, that's it. Yeah, but it's two gateways currently against two factories, so... I mean, his Dragoon production, despite the fact that it's been the only thing he's been doing, it's actually been pretty impressive. He's been able to get a large number of Dragoons already. His second base is finally mining, and despite everything, despite being a base down, he's actually ahead in supply against Biol. And I really don't understand how, but I guess Dragoons, they cost a lot of supply. SCVs don't cost as much, but here we go, here's the big move out by Buell. He's got his third base, and you can see immediately Kingdom pulling back with his Dragoons. Now, I don't know if he plans to try and jump on top of the army as it jumps down, but he's going to have to do something, or this army is eventually just going to push over and kill him, possibly. I mean, we've got double armory at the bottom of Kingdom, of, at the bottom of Buell's base. Plus one attack is already finished, and this is just—I I just don't even know how to commentate this game anymore. It's just so weird. Like there, there are no zealots. He's never pressed the Z button once this game. Like, there's just no zealots. Uh, okay, so he's gonna go for like DT drops or something, I guess. Or maybe he's just gonna get. Like, I, I don't know, this is the weirdest game. So he's I mean, gonna push forward with Dragoons. This is why Zealots exist, okay? So that you don't paint the ground blue with your Dragoons as they try to push up here. I mean, I mean wait, there's no way this actually works, right? He's no. killing a lot of tanks, but there's four more tanks back, but he has reset the tank count no. again. But I mean, the no, third base still is gonna four come tanks up. Kicks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and all the Dragoons. Okay, yeah, this is. No, that was it. That's it. Alright. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Kingdom is going to try and take his third base. He's actually got more Nexuses than there are gateways on this map at the moment. <laughs> Citadel of Adun is done. I mean, Buell is scanning all over, just trying to see what the hell is going on. He sees a Nexus going up at the third base, still sees only two gateways. Sees an Observatory. Uh, Zealot Speed is coming in, uh, despite the fact there's no actual Zealots on the map right now. And he's still building Dragoons, so uh, Zealot Speed going to be kind of... I think that's the right word, but it's su su superfluous. I think that's a word. Exactly, yeah, it is. And it's, it's even better when you say it like you're Gaston and you say like superfluous, like that. <laughs> that's uh, that's good. I like that. Gaston was the best character in that uh, in that film. Oh, by far. No, no, no. They they call it like Snow White or Sleeping Beauty or whatever whatever Disney princess movie that is. Beauty and the uh, Beast. But it's actually it's uh, yeah that one. Whatever. Nobody's ever watched that movie before. Uh, it, it should have been called the Gaston Show, and there should have been episodic content after that. But <laughs> I, I agree with you, Kicks. You have impeccable taste. Yeah, now, I mean, we're still, we're going to have a Robo now, we've got another two gateways, so he's going to multiply up to four, and add another three on as well, so uh, that's going to be seven gateways, just in case uh, you've kind of forgotten how maths works after the 12 minute game we've had here, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is not how math works, by the way, Kicks. This is not a thing that you should be expecting to see. It's like, well, uh, you know, it's the uh, 12 to 13 minute mark. Uh, this is when I throw down my third gateway. Uh, I don't know if that's how it works, but uh, we're going to see maybe perhaps why that is not how it works. And specifically on this map, when you get pushed, your third base dies instantly because you can just put tanks on the low ground and everything blows up. Yeah, like now, you can't even fit turrets or anything behind that mineral line. Yeah, so there's currently seven Dragoons outside of Kingdom's base right now, and there's currently nine tanks pushing towards them. 
This mm. is not going to go too well. This is a natural expansion for all intents and purposes. And it looks... He's not even sieging his tanks. Yeah, he knows he doesn't need to. I mean, he's got okay, mines on go. the high ground. The mine it gets a great hit on all of those what? dragoons. <laughs> what? Oh my god, this is like the perfect game for Bial. This is like Bial played this game a hundred times on like a Groundhog's Day scenario and he just knows how to play the perfect game on this map now. Oh my god, this is just... Ah, uh, I don't know. What uh, what do you say about this, Kicks? I mean, there isn't really too much to say. Well, unfortunately for Kingdom, this game is... This game is definitely done. I mean, Kingdom's gonna try and stay in, see if he can do something now. I mean, Bjorn is uh, laying tanks where he's walking, so maybe there can be an insane mind drag or something, but even so... Tanks shelling down on the Zerlitz, trying to rally out of the base. A Dragoon actually going down from the main as well. Great positioning here by Bjol. And Kingdom is on a timer here. And the timer is running out. The timer was flipped over. It was like a little sand hourglass before. But there was a hole in the bottom. Sand is absolutely <laughs> everywhere now. And Kingdom, I mean, there's not really too much he can do. He's just trying to delay the inevitable now. And, I mean, usually I've got a thing to say of, like, well... The, the sort of, well, I believe he tried his best, but GG, Kingdom taps out, and Biol uh, takes a 3-0 victory for Seoul. Yeah, uh, wow. I, maybe there's like a, wi there's a window, right? Uh, Biol had a tank that was like one hit away from dying. Yeah. And if that first tank had gotten taken out, then you can micro your Dragoons to bust through the wall at the front, take out some more SCVs, it gets crazy, right? Um... But for me, the remarkable decision by Kingdom is just to never build anything but Dragoons. At the end of the game, he had only built Dragoons, so yes. I don't know what you want to do at that point. It's one of those really weird moments where you can never really be too sure exactly what happened, but it almost feels like Kingdom was building up to try and take down a push that never came, so... Yeah, exactly. Uh, and by the time That's the push did come, he had a ton of tanks and no zealots, so it's like... Yeah, there's not really too much you can do about that, unfortunately. Like, Kingdom, he was up against a really, really strong opponent, obviously. Uh, there's not really too much I can say about that. I mean, it was... I'm just actually trying to check, so... I'm just gonna have to hide your camera just one second while I, uh... Hide my camera kicks? I'm not me. that ugly. Uh, basically, I need okay. to quickly check on Discord to see who actually won the walkover. Uh, but wow. I know there definitely was a walkover for game number four, so... That's going to be the end of that series. Of course, we've got another series coming up after that, and it should be a little bit more exciting. Now, BWL did put in a good amount of effort, of course. The game didn't go in their way. Kingdom's game was a little bit funky. Castle was a little bit funky as well. It felt like he had a good plan, but unfortunately, Scan defended a little bit too, too well. Uh, but other than that, I mean, the next series coming up should be good. It's going to be, it's going to be Media versus FBW. Sorry, I'm just trying to scroll up to find out where... Okay, so it was actually a walkover between... Well, walkover, uh, the walkover went to Noob. Unfortunately, uh, Kim Quax couldn't show up for his game. So uh, that's going to be a 4-0 victory for Seoul here. And I mean, it's not really too surprising when you look at the rosters, but it's still a little bit disappointing to see it go that way. And I'm sure BWL are a little bit disappointed in that as well. But they'll be back again, and they will certainly be trying a lot harder in that series. Wait, whenever I say anything, I'm not trying to be mean to BWL. Like, I don't... Kicks, kicks. You're I'm just digging, you're my digging hole. yourself deeper. Yeah, anyway, the way that you cover, the way that you recover from this is by reminding everyone that coming up next is FBW versus Media, including uh, the best game uh, that Faust has ever played. Or the worst. We don't know which one yeah. it is. Uh, so you guys definitely want to stick around for the second series of night and it'll all be coming up after this quick definitely not commercial break yeah see you guys in just over five minutes